Well, I need to welcome you back, and we'll see the big story today. We're talking about the new service chief and Nigerians' expectation from them, uh, judging that we've had, uh, or rather been bedeviled by a whole lot of security challenges uh, before now, and over the decade we've been struggling, if not more than, uh, with the issue of terrorism and a whole lot of others. But anyway, with the coming of the new service chief, many are already feeling a feeling of uh, fresh of breath air, and also a feeling of change. But anyway, I feel we need to continue our discussion. But I see how both of my guests here. We're talking of no other person, but Comrade Defer Adomo, who runs our security watch on our platform, uh, Quest 93.1 FM. And also, Omar Jeffrey Duffy, uh, who's a master's in intelligence security studies and also a bachelor's degree in criminology and also security studies and a security consultant uh, for us to truly understand all the problems it seems to be. But anyway, let's look at it. And I want us to take a different angle to this now. And uh, I will always, I always use on this platform that you cannot recover if you do not discover. So at least where you're going to, you should at least take a look at where you're coming from. Now, we know there's so much buzz and excitement about um, concerning the new appointment of service chief, but that has not only been this case. It has always been like that, even in the past. When there's a new change of service chief, we we'll always see the buzz, the excitement that surrounds it. But after some time, reality starts to set in. And Nigerians now start being overwhelmed by their lack of performance. And I want us to critically look at how it was with the last administration, who had two different service chiefs during his tenure. And he spent over 12 trillion in dealing with insecurity, but ended up losing over 70,000 Nigerians. My question is, where did we get it wrong there? Because if you do not understand our shortcomings then, we cannot really prepare to have a soft landing now. So where did we really get it wrong? Or where did the last administration get it wrong in dealing with the issue of insecurity, undermining that spent 12 trillion naira in eight years, still lost 70,000 Nigerians? Okay, I would uh, just look at this. Uh, sometime on the 16th of June, a Northern Coalition group came up uh, with a statement. 16 of June of which year? 16 of June of this year. Okay, just some couple of days. A couple back. of days back. And uh, why did they come up with a communique? Because there was a third force working for the enthronement of Lieutenant General Burotai as the NSA. Mm -hmm. And what was the communique? They were seriously against it. That those who benefit, I'm quoting them, those who benefited from the Northeast crisis should not find themselves into the government of that. And whether you want to believe it or not, from the information some of us had, mm -hmm. actually that was something. The way Boratai was being, you know, penned down. I think that was why they gave that nomenclature security advisor to, you know, mm -hmm. initially to to uh, uh, Ribadu. Eventually, when Mr. President came up with the appointment yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, mm. that he started changing the nomenclature to National Security Advisor. Mm. So, what am I trying to say? There were people who were responsible for the failure or the prosecution of this, uh, 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 the warfare. Now, I will not blame them holistically. I will look at the fundamental, you know, and that is the failure of leadership. Mr. President was unable to wade the beastie. The former president, the former, Mr. Former, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me say, uh, President Buhari, you know, I in the words of uh, former President uh, Lushego Obasanjo, he says something. He said, "You don't reinforce failure. When a man is failing, you don't don't hesitate to weigh the stick." And he allowed this man, if not for the revolt and public outcry, but that time would have been there for a long time. A man who was not achieving anything, and the entire northeast was almost annihilated. Especially in Bono State. So until there was a public outcry and people, were, there was going to be a reboot. That was when Mr. President thought it wise to make do with, to do it with it and all the other services. So you will understand that it was more of a leadership problem. You don't enforce failure. You don't reinforce failure. Once you discover that the people are not delivering, you get rid of them, replace them. When you come up with a statement, this is what this is our vision. This is the mission. This is how we'll go to achieve this vision. Once they are not traveling along that line, don't hesitate to wave your beast stick. That was what happened. It was failure of leadership. 
And so you don't, I, I don't want to look at it from the perspective of, because the onus lies in the hands of the commander in chief. Mm. He is the one who is absolutely in charge. Mm. So when he is, when the government fails, you don't say the chief of army staff failed. Mm. You look at the man who is at the helm of army. So it was more like a political issue. It was a, po a lack of political will. Your feet down. The political will was not there was to there. deal with the issues. <laughs> now, Comrade Adama, a, a report published in January this year by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime um, recommends that this, to solve the issue of insecurity and terrorism in Nigeria, the problem of cattle rustling and banditry must be given priority. So my question was, was it so much of a challenge to us at of that time? I'm talking about just um, the beginning of the second administration of uh, President uh, Mohamed Buhari. Do you see, like what he said, that the problem that really, because we were just being faced with Boko Haram in 2015 when he came, mm -hmm. yeah, we had some pocket of issues of banditry in Zamfara, but they were just pocket of issues. But under his watch, they grew from a tiny speck to more like a mountain that was unshakable and unmovable <laughs> by two different service chiefs, and it is still a problem in this very administration. So was it more of a political will, like he said, that generate, degenerated and a lack of putting his feet down that made us where we are now when it comes to the issue of insecurity? If you are cleansing a house, Mike, you don't need to go down and commit more atrocities. <laughs> you understand? Mm. That, what, that, all the things that happen in that administration have to do with lack of political will from the leadership of the government at that time. Don't forget, when the military took the war, to them in the northeast, that was a statement from them, Mr. President. Do not shoot to kill. Arrest them and de-radicalize them. Mm. How do you go to somebody who is injured spiritually and physically in their own feet that you want to go and catch that person and bring him to your house and start preaching to him to repent? One of them did said, if you people don't want me to commit more havoc, that is one of the, 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 the terrorists. Mm. If you don't want me to commit more havoc, kill me. Because the very moment you set me free, I am going back to the forest to start killing again. And they say, no, don't touch him. That was all other issues that came up. These people are my tribesmen. Treat them with mercy. And how do you expect such people to obey the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? You told them, go and fight, and you are not giving them these weapons to fight. Don't forget, this period of uh, the past administration, we bought to Kano, to Kano jets. Do you know where they are today? Have they been used any day? Answer me. They have not been used. Now, you give somebody and you give somebody a job, but you don't give that person the enabling environment to operate. It was, it was an open wound, an open injustice that everybody saw. You brought in this uh, cattle uh, uh, rustling. If one cattle is rustled in the north, they will recover that cattle in less than 24 hours. But if 100 people are kidnapped, in three, four, five years, they are still in captivity. How do you think that those things will work in favor of the country? It was a deliberate attempt by some sections of the country to make sure that they are perpetually on top of the other ones. And that is what this government wants to, to forestall. You cannot blame only the chief of army staff. Remember when there was, was it in, in, in Borono, yes, when that crisis was, it was very hot. Mm. And Mr. President gave order that the IG and the, the chief of army staff will relocate. Did they go? Like you said, was any big sick will? No. What did they say? So it, they was, more president was, it, it was more of a lack of political will. Mm -hmm. Because now, let's, let's, let's leave the former administration. But even in looking at it, we'll still look at what we suffered. Because as of present, I, I want to know the biggest challenge now this new service chase will be facing. And, and why I would do that is, as of present, we're not only being grabbed with terrorism that have killed about 32,250 persons in the last six years, we are also being faced with kidnapping and banditry. We have claimed about 32,000 Nigerians. And also the issue of almost ethnic cleansing and land grabbing that had claimed nothing less than 12,000 lives in the last three years. But that's not the, only the issues we are being faced with. We are now also being faced with the issue of courtism, ritual killings, and armed robbery in the South. So for you, what do you feel was the biggest challenge that these new security chiefs should confront head on. What do they say? And uh, uh, empty this in is a devil workshop. Then an I do man. An I do man is a devil workshop. Yes. Oh. Lack of activity. We are being faced with financial strangulation. Hmm. We are being faced with uh, false financial um, 
uh, confidence. We are being faced with shortages of every social aspect of life. If this administration actually want to succeed, let them open up this economy. Let more youth be employed. De de remove their mind. De devalue their... But, 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 but Comrade it looks as if he did not get my question. I, I know that's going to be a long-term solution. Yeah. But a quick one that you feel the savage chief should deal with precisely now. Among all of these problems I've uh, emphasized or elaborated, we're talking about terrorism, we're talking about kidnapping and banditry. I don't want to call it only just terrorism itself. So we're talking about courtism, ritual killings, and robbery in the South is now just going out of control. Which do you feel the security chiefs need to put their feet down on and pretty fast? To give us that feeling of, yes, they were just... Let really them carry the war. Let them take the war to the dormant, not even the backyard now, to the dormant of all the terrorists. And let the government and Nigerians see that they're they actually doing their jobs. The issue of shoot not to kill should be totally eliminated from the, from the lexicon of Nigerian uh, security issues. Go to these people, get them arrested, prosecute them, let them face the law. Let them know that what they have done is wrong to deter others. Apart from that, there is nothing, no, no, no short solution to it. Okay. Now, um, yeah, uh, Mr. Mojafi, the biggest challenge that these new services will definitely face. I think the biggest challenge they will face is that of leadership. Mm. Is that of leadership and the power, political way, it, just like in the past administration. What I think, should, I, and I am very, very positive, Mr. President has what it takes. Mm. So I'm, I, I understand that he, mm. because when we talk, when, when the former president came on board, we were looking at, they said his body language. Mm. Uh, initially, there was a, a you know, palpable fear amongst yeah. the the, the scope of criminals, but after a while, they discovered that uh, at least the criminal is our own and the man is our own. So they were, you know, they felt at home again. But so I, I think that with the way Mr. President is going, the the, the body language is already is already is already emitting a kind of message out. Mm. There will be no room for, for criminality. Mm. So I I think that the body language and the willpower mm. should be one. It should decisively weigh the beastie. Okay. And I want to just look at something. Let's look at something briefly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these are all internal securities. Am I right? These are yeah. internal security issues. Mm. And uh, I think this section, the uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic, gives the power for Nigeria Police Force to be the lead agency mm. in internal security matters. Of course. All other agencies can be called in to come and help. Yeah. What I sincerely think should happen, there should be a rejig of the Nigeria Police Force. Mm. I can is it possible that the Nigeria police force doesn't have a special weapons and tactics team? What I mean a special weapons and tactics, I'm talking about the SWAT team, which is a reactionary, a reactionary force. Mm. Quick reaction. A, a quick reaction. Mm. It, well, you, you look at have you ever seen a pursuit of a criminal in America or maybe in the United Kingdom? You see a flight, you see a pursuit on air and the vehicles uh, vehicles on ground. So there is no way to run to. There is nowhere. There is an area coverage and there is a lot, you know. So at the end of the day, you are. But, but, but don't you think the dynamics we are now facing, having banditries and even uh, criminals that have firepower that even the Nigerian police force don't have, would, would the Nigerian police force now be uh, saddled with that issue of what the military now, still now, take my, that my, mantle and get it cleaned up before we now put it back in the hands now, let of me the Nigerian police? Let me tell you something. When we talk about special special weapons and tactics teams, mm. you know we have snipers, you know, you know we have snipers. We have uh, you know different weapons. That's why they call it special weapons mm. and tactics team. It's not a conventional AK-47 you carry and all that. There are different weapons they use. Mm. Now, what makes you believe that? If you look at the, the criminal elements, are less than zero point zero 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 two percent in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So if we get our policing right. You know, criminals are living al amongst us. They are not in any way out of us. They are within. So if we up our intelligence, you know, uh, uh, you, you see, like I, in those days, you see, the, we used to have a CID. They mm -hmm. call it Criminal Investigation uh, Department. Department, CID. Uh, where you have plain clothes men living with it. It's difficult to even know a CID those days. When we're growing up, we had CIDs living with it. With some of them can even come to the area and become farmers. And become farmers. And some people come and come to... Uh, so we should reintroduce We should reintroduce that. that. You know, that's what I'm saying. Reject the internal security network mechanism. You know, uh, so that we begin to think of how to, you know, take away mm -hmm. the, the armed forces back to the barracks where they belong. So I think that 
for now, the mm. military should still remain mm. to you know to uh, uh, deal with uh, the issues. to support the police. Mm. But in the process, there should be a rejuvenation. Of the, Niger of the Niger police force. Okay, now let's look at it now. Yeah, because because it, it will only make sense if you look at the past. I'm, I'm always good at that. I always take comparison. It's always right if you look at the past to redirect your future. Mm -hmm. Now, during the last administration, we had one of the longest service chiefs ever. Mm -hmm. Service chiefs that were put in 2015 and had to leave, like you said, in 2021, mm -hmm. after almost a revolt mm -hmm. was mostly felt. Uh, especially in the northeast. Now, should that not also be put into? This is the reason I'm asking, because like yesterday, no other person but activists and um, uh, an activist. I'm talking about no other one. Uh, Deji Adeoju uh, uh, said the, the only way we can do this is we tell the service chiefs that if you do not have perform within exactly. a limited period of time, yeah. you should be kicked out. Should we introduce that to the new service chief? Because, uh, like I said initially, one of the reasons even these outgoing service chiefs could not perform was the issues were even bad beyond their control when they came in. Issue that started in 2015, lingered to 2021, having to even have Breta and the rest are the longest service chief ever mm -hmm. in the history of Nigeria. And they were never changed until it was almost like everybody was on fire. So should a timeline not also be put an ultimatum also be put on this new service chief for them to perform to see a change. Otherwise, you have to give them a template. I don't want to hear of this as so, so, so time anymore. Once you renege, once you once you fail, automatically consider yourself out. Uh, this the immediate past president did it when he was military head of state. When he called the IG, I don't want to hear of crime. IG called the AIG in your zone. I don't want to hear anything like that. The AIG went down to DIG, up to the DPU. Then you were saying DPU was going to work in the night. That was the only period I noticed that type of thing. And whenever any crimes happen, you are holding the person there responsible for it. When they were looking for an enemy from your state, and there was a meeting. Well, it's not a brother, though. But go ahead. It's not a brother, but yeah, it's a right, right, right. Okay, right. from your state. Yeah, from Bender State, our state. Go ahead. Okay, no comment, no comment on that again. Mm. You know, when they held a meeting in Dodan Palace, the system of government was still in Lagos. IBB specifically asked the team, Yang, mm. hey, team, where is Anini? That question jolted the team. He never expected it. The man stepped back and said, My CNC, we will soon get to him. And because of that, he deployed every police. Intelligence. And also, Yakuluma was drafted in. Oh, Yakuluma was drafted in because of the urgency and the magnitude of uh, uh, the, the mass uh, yeah. operation. Operating op, 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 was almost looked like a gun. No, I want to operation mode. Yes, Oprande. Modus of the modus of Oprande of, uh, of, of, of the guy. And the guy was arrested. That is how these things you work. Not that you want to, you, you are given another, you are waiting for the other to be approved by someone, that one is waiting for another one at the top, then the bureaucracy part of it also should be eliminated, it should be reduced to the barest minimum. There is a crime going on in this vicinity. You call the DPO, the DPO will call the area commander, the area commander will call the uh, uh, PPRO, the PPRO will call the, the commissioner, commissioner will take orders from uh, DIG, AIG, then IG. What do you think the criminals will be doing? They will be there waiting. At the end of the day, they will start laughing at you, eh? before your order comes, we have done what we want to do. All these are the things that the military have to look at. Look, it is not a crime to fail. Mm. It's not a crime to fail. But it is a crime to remain a failure. Mm. If we have failed in the past, put all the figures on the table, all this is on the table. Why did we fail? What and where did we go wrong? Plug all those loopholes. Okay. The, the, the police are at today. Let me tell you one thing, whether we like it or not. We have one of the best police outfits in Africa. And even in the world over. Right, we've well, 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 gone through a of, uh, series of uh, peacekeeping missions. And and we, we, we never learned. We never learned. Now, now, now uh, let me come to you, Omar Jeffrey. Yeah, a timeline. Sh sh should the new service chief get a timeline for these issues to be resolved? Should President Bonamed put, uh, put a timeline? And putting a timeline, would it may not be unnecessary pressure on them already? Uh, like I said earlier, I think uh, Mr. President knows what he has done. I think before anybody is hired for a job, you understand there must be interviews. Apart from yes. me assessing their dozers and all that, mm. you there is a possibility he must have called them, mm. interviewed them. They will give them how do you intend to fight this? How will you go about this? And he has they must have given him the blueprint how they will go about. So aside the time lag, I think whatever they know what they that's why I said earlier, 
these guys are trained for this mm. you know and uh, it's beyond what we see yes it's beyond what is on surface whatever you're seeing on the surface is just the surface thing there is you know it's like when you what is happening under the waters it's yeah. difficult mm. to, uh, to, to, observe. to observe from the you know, surface of the water so i think there is a lot more to it but a time lag should come. A time lag will come definitely, but I think the mission, having spelt the mission, I mean the vision, mm -hmm. this is our vision. Then the mission is what he works with. If you derail out of the mission, if it is, but, but should, should the mission take us four years? No, no, it's, no, it's not a four years mission. Mm -hmm. Definitely, time has something, some essence. Time is of essence. We we'll have Nero Rubado. Now let's look at him. One one minute each, please, because of time. We really have no time. Uh, let, let me quickly start with you, Commander for the more. One minute. Do you see him spearheading? a change as it concerns the security architecture. Yes, followed by his assistant when he was a ESC boss. Mm. But the only little hitch I can see over that is, he's coming from the police angle. Mm. Will the military top brass want to respect him? Want to respect him because the NSA indirectly serves as the head of all the service security teams. Security teams yeah. That is just the area I'm looking at. But you know, that in, in, uh, in management, there is something they call a positional power. Yes. Yes, that position has given him power over all these problems. Yes. So mm -hmm. they have to give him that respect because he's the person that brings Mr. President to him all on a daily basis. So uh, the, 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 he is going to perform yes. if given the necessary tools. But I think uh, uh, the President is ready to do that. Well, then anyway, he has got to the back end and Mr. Yes. President has named him the security, national security advisor, and that's how it stands. Yes, um, yes. I, I think coming think? from yeah, the right. intelligence uh, mm. uh, background, with the mm. intelligence background, I think because the NDC is the coordinating uh, factor in the intelligence sector of the yeah. Federal Republic. That's the 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 in thing of the NSA. Yeah. And so the office of the NSA, which we call ONSA, is the coordinating, is the melting point mm -hmm. for all the intelligence agencies of the Federal Republic. And coming from that angle, I think he's going to do well. He's going to do credibly well. Uh, Age-wise, he's older than all of them. Yeah. You yeah. see, and, uh, yeah. uh, and I don't, I, I probably that was one of the reasons why maybe mm -hmm. younger people came in and all mm -hmm. that. But I think I see him doing well. I see him doing well. And congratulations to our own uh, CDS. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he's uh, uh, the, the wife is an Isoko woman. So oh, Christopher, Musa. Christopher Musa, uh, you know, the wife is an Isoko woman. So that one is a, is a data state thing as well. So mm -hmm. I, I think congratulations to Ross. And, uh, she, she's Isoko from where? She's Isoko. She's from Yidi. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. it's a good thing. So I, I see the whole thing working at you well know, for us. Uh, okay, well, how you finish? Uh, we are relocating to Abuja. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, before we do that relocation, I need to thank both of you. And I'm talking of no other person, mm -hmm. but. Um, Mr. Omo Jafe Defe is a master degree holder in intelligent and security studies and also a security consultant right here in Delta State. And to our very own comrade, Edmo, who um, anchors uh, Security Watch. And we'll be listening to more of that later today. Yes, uh, I should Around 11 11.30. I'm inviting you for my certificate better on Sunday. If you don't agree with me, you go to court. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, we will see in court then. Uh, I need to thank you also for really staying put and also giving us your own insight as it concerns mm -hmm. the appointment of the new service chiefs. But uh, more thanks to you guys for always staying put with Quest today, uh, always making it uh, your very own and your number one tonic. We truly appreciate that. But on behalf of the crew, I'll play with you. So still remain with us because we have sports shuffleness. We talk get eminence by heading that. But for me, Michael Gobadi and the crew, I'll say, God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>